it's me, Wilma Fingerdo, with the Fingerdo Review of RuPaul's Drag Race UK Season 3, Episode 1. But before we get started, I got a couple of red bubble models to show off. First, well, this is Sean Smith from Toronto in the Large Azusa Sweet Marie and the Ships at CT, rocking that sexy summer look before all that cool weather moves in. If at all, climate change, people, it's real. And this is the lovely and talented Chuck Misseldine in Lar D'Souza's Wilma Pride Tea. Look at that, Chuck. Now, if you would like to become a red bubble model yourself, it's super simple. Down in the description box below, I've got a link to my red bubble store. Grab yourself some merch and make sure you tag me in a photo of it, either on Twitter or Instagram. You can do it on Facebook too, but I'm I'm not often there and I feel bad about that. Also, I have links for you to become a tipper do or join me and the Finger Do family on Patreon if you would like to support the Finger Do Review and me in another way. Plus, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Seriously. Now, on to the important stuff. Jorge, drink me. Ooh, thank you, Jorge. What is this? The 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 uh, easy margarita, Will Marita, isn't that what we call it? Fresca and tequila. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Loves it. All right then. Before we get started, I just want to say how much I've been looking forward to this season of Drag Race UK. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on it, but I'm hoping that it takes the foul stench out of the air that was well left by Drag Race Holland. Seriously, and so far. Well, it hasn't disappointed me, I'm just saying. We started this season off with the arrival of Veronica Green. And can I just say, I was so looking forward to her this season. Well, until she walked into the workroom looking like this. Seriously, I get it. Her name's Green, so she painted herself green. Choices. If the makeup had been applied more evenly, then I might have been impressed, but as it was, this looked like a bad spray tan. A very bad spray tan. On Mars. Seriously, I wonder what I would have thought about this look if this had been her first season of Drag Race. But as it is, we already know Miss Green and what she's capable of, and this look did nothing to confirm it for me. Looks like Ronnie's starting the season off with a finger don't. Seriously. Thank God the next queen into the workroom was Miss Kitty Scott Claus. Her legally blonde red, white, and blonde ensemble was better than the movie, and her personality was what I was waiting for. This is my kind of queen. Loud, lovely, and opinionated. This is the kind of queen you hang around so, you, so she can't talk about you behind your back. I gave this entrance a finger do. Seriously. River Medway was next, and can I just say what a cutie pie, in or out of drag. I just love her already, although I didn't love this entrance outfit. I hope she's saving better for later, but at least she made it herself. Skills are skills, so I gave her a finger do, because, well, it's not the worst I've seen. <laughs> sister, sister. Scarlet Harlot was next, and I immediately gave her a finger do for this look because <laughs> I'm a whore for a leopard print. I know Scarlet's 26, but out of drag, she looks younger than Blair St. Clair. Seriously. Next in the workroom was the overtly colorful Vanity Milan. And I have to say, I hated this look. No offense, but those feather corsets always end up looking like a paper doll outfit on whoever wears them, like they've been taped to the front. Maybe I was expecting more from her after her Meet the Queens video. I don't know, but I gave this look a finger don't. Next through the workroom doors was Ella Vade. It was a cheap costume with chunky boots, and I just loved it. Probably because chunky boots was my drag queen name in high school. <laughs> Finger do for Ella is what I'm trying to say. Veronica seemed to get her nose out of joint over there being another musical theater queen in the workroom. No wonder Ronnie's green with envy. <laughs> Theresa May was next into the workroom, beautifully representing her Spanish heritage and had the best entrance line of the season. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. Hate me because I'm an immigrant. <laughs> I'm beyond impressed. Finger due for Miss May, seriously. And then, of all the workrooms and all the towns, she had a walk into this one. She's the most anticipated queen to compete in drag race history, the AFAB queen herself, because she's absolutely fabulous, Veronica Scone. Now, 
this is how you make an entrance into the workroom. Take notes, queens. Seriously. Oh, and give Vicky a finger do while you're at it. Next into the workroom was Electra Fence. And I have to say, this was the worst entrance look of the day. I hated the bodysuit so much. I might have liked it a bit more if she patted her hips at least, but as it was, it was minimum effort. And that neon, what are we calling this, sweetie, a wig? It was awful. Finger don't for the fence toucher, I'm just saying. Anubis was next through the workroom doors, complete with terrible Egyptian puns, and I loved it. And her. This tall drink of water looked gorgeous in her structured wig and color block fun fur coat, so I gave her a finger do. Does anyone else think she looks like Jennifer Lawrence when she's not in drag? Just me? Then, one of the most stunning queens I've ever seen made her entrance. Crystal Versace stomped into that workroom and everyone gagged. I love that she said she doesn't call herself an Instagram queen because she's not just a look. Well said, Crystal. <laughs> now pick up that finger do. You earned it, Sarah. And then it happened. Charity Case entered the workroom. Bless her, but she looks like she got lost on the way to the Dragula auditions. Needless to say, the other queens were shocked into silence. Seriously. But I have to say, this look was stunning. I mean, I was stunned. So instead of a finger do, I'm giving her a finger claw. <laughs> and then it was time for the queen's first Rue mail, which made as much sense as they always do. Thank goodness Rue arrived to greet the queens and give them their first mini challenge, dirty charades. Or is it charades? The queens were divided into three groups of four. Group one was Kitty Scott Claus, Ella Bidet, Charitza May, and Scarlet Harlot. This group did very well, thanks to Charitza May, who guessed two of the four clues on her own. And English isn't even her first language. Seriously. Group two was River Medway, Vanity Milan, Electra Fence, and Veronica Green. This group would have done a lot better if Veronica hadn't been on their team. But in Ronnie's defense, the curious case of Benjamin Bumhole was a big ask. Seriously. I said ask. The last group was Anubis, Charity Case, Crystal Versace, and Victoria Scone. The best, well, funniest part of Team 3's round was Victoria Scone approaching the podium. Her fight against gravity or magnetic field was so funny. By the time she was lying on the floor, so was I, from laughing. And then it was on to the maxi challenge, a two-look runway. The queen's first look had to represent their hometown, and then their second look had to represent their favorite thing. Talk about vague. So, without pomp or circumstance, the queens moved in and got out of drag. Right away, as the clothes came off, the queens addressed the elephant in the room. Wait, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> I mean, they asked Victoria what it was like to be in a room of the opposite sex getting naked. I'm just going to say right now, I love Vicky. Without being mean or stroppy, she shut down the queens by saying that she's used to it because she's been doing drag for more than a hot minute and, better yet, been doing theater even longer. And for those of you who don't know theater... There's never enough space for people to get changed in. You get comfortable with yourself and others real fast, whether you want to or not. Over on the other side of the workroom, Ella and Electra grilled Crystal over the work she's had done on her face. Now, I'd like to get a clarification on what they mean by work. It sounds like the only thing Crystal's really had done is her nose, and I don't care how old you are. If you hate your nose, you should be able to get it fixed. Seriously. There, I said it. As for the rest, it sounds like she's had fillers done on her cheeks and lips, which in my mind isn't work. It's more of a hobby, especially since you have to keep going back for touch-ups, I'm just saying. Personally, I've never had any desire to have anything done on my face. Not that I thought I was gorgeous growing up. I just wasn't bothered by what I saw in the mirror. Nowadays, well, if I had the money and I thought it mattered. Sure, I'd get Botox and maybe have my eyes done, but again, I don't hate anything when I look in the mirror, so I'm always surprised by people who have had work done. But then, when I was Crystal's age, the big thing was getting tattoos. These days, the trend is plastic surgery, so 
I mean, who knows what'll be next? Amputations? Vanity and River had a chat about family and support, and that's when my jaw hit the floor. River revealed that her mom had not only died from COVID, but that she died just before River got the drag race call. That made me worry for River. I hope she's been able to process her loss because you don't want those issues creeping up on you in a competition. Seriously. Here's to River and her shoe shopping wig modeling mother. Seriously. And then it was elimination day. And because the queens had two looks to produce, well, they got right down to it. Kitty asked Ronnie how she was doing this time around. And Veronica said she was happy not to feel like she had to prove herself to the room. Although, I have to say, being underestimated worked for her in season two. Here in season three, she could be up against being overestimated. Let's hope the judges and the other queens haven't set her bar too high. I'm just saying. Vanity and Charitza got chummy talking about their partners. Vanity is married, but not Charitza. Even though they've been together for eight years, she moved from Barcelona to be with her boyfriend. But now he's back in Spain teaching English and poor Charitza is all alone working from home. So being in a room full of people was kind of getting to her blessed. Who else wanted to crawl into that TV and just give that sweet lover a hug? Just me? Not you. Of course, the lippy one, Kitty Scott Claus, had to be the one to ask who was going to go home first. Well, that shut the room up. No one wanted to be that queen, but, well, someone was going to be whether they wanted to be or not. Needless to say, everyone put it into high gear then and there. Seriously. Hold on. Now, I have to ask, has anyone seen one of these items Scarlet Harlot was using before? It looks like an eye shield for mascara. That's a first for me. I don't know if I like it. But there was no time for me to ogle the apparatus, and not because ogle the apparatus was my drag queen name in high school. It was time for season three's first runway. I have to say, I was disappointed by Rue's look. If I were judging her, I'd have given her a finger don't for sure. Her wig was uncharacteristically flat-ish, and I felt like we've seen that dress before. Just me? Back to Britain, like we could stop her, was Michelle Visage looking gorgeous. Also looking gorgeous was Graham Norton in a stunning suit. And surprise, surprise, the hilariously brilliant Matt Lucas. Category is Queen of Your Hometown. Victoria Scon was first dressed like a Cardiff daffodil. I have to admit, I liked her entry outfit more, but I didn't hate this one. So, finger do for Victoria. Next was Kitty Scott Claus in the classic dairy milk chocolate bar colors to represent the birthplace of British chocolate, Birmingham. And if you say there's no difference between American chocolate and British chocolate, I'll give you a pinch. A hard one. Britain's is better, period. As for her runway, this was a total mess for me. A brown leotard with a purple robe tucked into a belt? That's a finger don't any day of the week. Sorry about it. Ella Vidé represented Dagenham with her ode to the women who fought for equal rights. I have to say, I didn't mind this look with the line worker's jacket, but that Poochie-esque number underneath was everything, so gave her a finger due. Anubis was next, and if she didn't look tall before, this ode to Brighton more than made up for it. If I could live anywhere in the world, it would be Brighton because of that pier, which was the inspiration for Anubis's runway. It's not the best thing I've seen on the runway, but I still gave her a finger due. Seriously. And then River Medway took the stage honoring her hometown of Medway. I hated this outfit out of the gate, but that little sweetie sold the hell out of it. She was dressed as the statue of postal pioneer Thomas Waghorn, but I couldn't find any reason why it's often seen with a pylon on its head. Well, and sometimes on its outstretched hands. If any of you out there know, please leave me a comment down below. As for River, her attempt to be that statue for as long as she could and shuffling down the, ru the runway was a hoot. It was all very, look over there! And I gave her a finger due for it, I'm telling you what. And then Christopher Sache took the runway and I gagged. I actually clutched pearls. Her face was so beautiful. I didn't even care that she was representing her hometown of Kent. I couldn't take my eyes off her face. She's taken that classic raven beige face to new heights. And 
I'm living for it. As for her runway, yes, it was a onesie with the sculptural cage and plastic plants all over it, but her body was right, her legs looked gorgeous, and again, I could not take my eyes off her face. Finger due for Crystal. And the rest of those queens better watch out, especially Raven. Rue may hire that queen to take her job if she's not careful, I'm just saying. Next up, representing her hometown of Rochdale was Veronica Green. She looked cute in her little cotton-picking outfit. I'm just sorry that she had to follow Crystal, is all I'm saying. Still, finger due for Ronnie. Scarlet Harlot was next, representing East London as a pearly Queen Elizabeth I. The runway was simple and gorgeous and got a well-deserved finger due for me. I'm serious. Electra Fence was next, representing Burnley and its Lady Miners, which... Now that I've said it out loud, it sounds dirty. I get that she was trying to represent the groundbreaking women from her history, but this runway was too simple for me. If she could take historical liberties by wearing chaps, she could have stoned them while she was at it, is all I'm saying. So, unfortunately, gave her runway a finger don't. Vanity Milan was next, representing South London. Is there a big Jamaican community in South London? Because I didn't get Vanity's runway. It didn't mean I didn't like it. I just didn't get it. Finger due for vanity. Next, representing Newcastle was Theresa May, stylishly dressed as a magpie, which is the nickname for the fans of the Newcastle footballers. Finger due for Miss May. I love that she said that she is a British queen because she didn't do Dragon Spain. Here's to her. I like her. And finally, dressed as a Lancashire rose was Charity Case. I love this look. It was over the top monster glam and I thought she did an excellent job and had no problem giving her a finger due as well. She made that herself. Stunning. And then it was time for part two. My favorite things. Victoria Scon's favorite thing was afternoon tea. I have to say I'm quite a fan of afternoon tea myself so I gave her a finger due. Seriously. Kitty's favorite thing was ABBA but then that's most people's favorite thing. Still, finger due for Kitty. Ella Bidet's favorite thing was Daniel Kazar's Pride Progress flag. And I have to say, her runway did it more than proud. Do you see what I did there? <laughs> finger due for Ella. You're not impressed by me ever, are you? Anubis' favorite things were sea creatures, which makes me wonder why she chose such a meh dress to represent them. Copper? I would have gone with the seafoam green myself. Finger don't for Anubis and whatever she did to that poor unsuspecting wig. God bless. River Medway's favorite thing was music, but from her runway, I would have guessed it was odd asymmetrical outfits. Thursday. Finger don't for River. Crystal's favorite thing was cats. The animals, not the musical. So I gave her a finger due, unless it had been the other way around, seriously. God bless Veronica Green, because I sure didn't. This outfit didn't scream computer games to me. It screamed Eddie Monsoon in an ugly outfit. So, yeah, I gave her a finger don't. It's too bad River Medway hadn't seen Scarlet's Ode to Music Runway, because then I'm sure she would have changed her favorite thing. I'm so serious. This is how you do it. Well done, Scarlet. Finger do. Electra's favorite thing was her birthday. I would have thought it was having sex with Sister Sister. Why else all that blue around her mouth? Seriously. Finger don't for Electra. Vanity's favorite thing is her home away from home, Estonia. I like this look, so I gave it a finger do as well. Seriously, it was gorgeous. Theresa May chose art as her favorite thing, and this runway expressed it well. I love that she painted the outfit herself, so of course I gave her a finger do. OMG, I love Charity Case's Ode to Freak Shows, but I worried for all those sufferers of colophobia because that was one scary clown. And even though she didn't bother tucking, it was stunning and deserving of a finger do. And then it was time for the judges' critiques. First off, Kitty Scott Claus, Ella Day, Veronica Green, Vanity Milan, Charitza May, and Charity Case were all safe, so they frigged off. As for the rest of the queens, Victoria was first, and not only did everyone love both her runways, but they couldn't say enough about how wonderful it was to have her in the competition. You could see it made her a bit emotional. Me too. Anubis was next, and no one seemed to like her orange sequin dress, to the point 
where Rue had to tell her she needs to bring it harder to the runway. Thank God it wasn't from H&M. Even though Rue and Michelle didn't understand River's first runway, they loved it. They loved it even more once she explained to them what it was all about. As for her second outfit, it was a meh for all the judges, but Rue thought she would have loved it more if she'd done that little scooch like her first look. Little scooch was my drag queen name in high school, by the way. <laughs> Crystal was clearly the judge's favorite of both runways, and Rue couldn't praise her enough for her perfection and being so far ahead in the game. Watch out, Raven! Scarlet Harlot was another favorite of the judges. Graham Norton called her the Meryl Streep of drag. It was a good week to be Miss Scarlet, I'll tell you what. The judges were divided with Electra Fence. They liked her second look, but Michelle didn't think she'd gone far enough with the first one. Electra assured all the judges that she's listening and would take their critiques to heart and break out the rhinestones. Rue said it was about more than rhinestones. It was about getting a peek at the queen and her making it more drag. And not shopping at H&M. Back in the Untucked Lounge, the safe queens were all happy to survive the first week, even though a few of them wished they'd been more than safe. When the rest of the queens arrived, it was very clear that the judges loved Victoria. Charity Case was surprised that Scarlett was in the top, while Anubis thought she got the worst critiques of the day and became a little emotional about it. Losing her dad at 16 had a bit to do with it because her last memory of her dad was going to the aquarium. But I'll say this, I'll bet there was no copper sequence at the aquarium when they were there. I'm just saying. Bless. Electra thought she'd received the harshest critiques and no one argued with her. Well, River thought she had some harsh comments as well. And, well, she wasn't wrong. But we all can agree that little scooch in the first round saved her this week. I'm just saying. When the queens returned to the runway, Rue had a surprise for them. Not only would the bottom two queens be lip syncing for their life, but the top two queens would be lip syncing for the win. Gasp. I don't think anyone was surprised that Crystal Versace was in the top and that Veronica Scon was there with her. So, without even waiting a moment longer, they did their lip sync right then and there to Bonnie Tyler's Total Eclipse of the Heart. Best song ever! 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 This was an interesting lip sync. Crystal was perfection, while Victoria was camp loveliness. They both did a great job, but I really feel that Crystal edged Vicky out, so it was no surprise to me that Crystal was this week's winner. Here's to Crystal and Victoria. Well done, Queens. Seriously. As for the bottom two, sadly, it was Anubis and Electra that landed there. See, I told you that Scooch would be River saving grace, I'm just saying. The bottom two Queens had to lip sync to Little Mix's Sweet Melody. They both started out pretty even. I love some of the poses Anubis struck off the top, but then Electra started bouncing off that stage, literally. She was amazing. She went from being on her knees to in midair like she was bouncing on a wire. It was all over for Anubis at that moment, if you ask me. Not that she didn't give it a good try, but there was no keeping up with Electra. So when Rue told Electra to Shantae, no one, including Anubis, was surprised. It's probably why she took it with grace and charm and sashayed as only a camp queen can, with a joke on her lips and a swing in her hips. That's how I'd do it anyway. So, what did you think? Did the right queen go home? What about River? I'm worried that her wardrobe may make her the tea of coffee of the season. And how about Crystal Versace? She's clearly got some tricks in her dance bag, but will Victoria surprise her with a few of her own? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And while you're there, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And don't forget to check out my links in the description box for ways to support me and my channel. Until next week, miss me! Mwah! Seriously, 19 years old. 19 years old. Actually, when they were filming this, I think that Christopher Versace was 18. Anubis, oh, you know, my heart always goes out to the tall queens because I know it's hard for them to buy shoes. Uh, but that queen, she lost a lot of weight. I, it broke my heart when she said that she was fat because she's not. She might be bigger than some people, but she lost a lot of weight. And I follow her already on Instagram. I think she's a hoot. Some of those queens though, this is gonna be a good season. I was really surprised by how good some of those queens were.
Which makes me worry for Veronica Green. I think the fact that uh, some of these queens are really, really polished. That, that charity case is going to just be a bone of contention for some of those queens, I think, for sure. Because her drag is beyond. It's beyond. But is it too far? I find it interesting that she walked in last. And so did Evie Oddly. Just, just putting it out there. Ooh, so did Sharon Needles. I'm just putting it out there. She's a sweetheart. No one's voting her out because she's a mean one, that's for sure. If anyone's getting voted out early, it's going to be that Christopher Sanchez because she's been bad. 